Hello and welcome back to Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. In this part I am going to be going through the next palace, Mindoro Palace. It's significantly longer than the first palace of the game, but it's still not too challenging I don't think. But before I head over there there's a few things I can collect. I'm gonna get a heart container, I'm gonna get some extra experience points via point bags, and then I can head over there. So this cave right here, if you'll remember this guy, it's called the Mew, and now we can finally kill him with the downward thrust ability. Makes it a lot a lot easier to deal with some enemies as well. So this cave has this heart container, and now I have six full heart containers. Next up I am going to get some points back just to help me level up a bit faster. I want to max out my damage on my sword, so I'm trying to get as much experience as possible. And it's going to be in this cave right here. You don't have to come here. This is only for extra experience points. I gotta deal with these annoying guys here. I'm doing an awful job aiming at them, but I managed to get two in one hit there. There's a Goria, I don't know why I'm so scared of him, usually I just charge up on them. Alright, there you go. And you can see that if you use the downward thrust, it makes some of the enemies a lot easier. Like, I just bashed my sword into his skull there, and he died in one hit. And this guy is trolling me right now, but he finally died. Can refill my magic. So I did all that for this little point back here worth 200 points. And it adds up, so it's highly worth it, I think. Especially if you've been leveling up some of the other stuff, like your life and your magic. Alright, and from here I can head over to the palace, but first there's one last thing here. There's a magic container in this screen. In case you've been using your magic and you need a refill, you can grab that. And I always like these scenes with Octoroks because they're just very easy to kill and they give a ton of experience. So just like that I got 30. And that stupid guy caught up with me. But it's no problem because this is another free 30 experience points. Or actually that one dropped a potion so I only got 20. But here's the second palace of the game, this is Medoro Palace. And like I said, it's significantly longer than the first one. There's some rooms that you don't have to go into, I skipped some of them. But I do manage to grab a lot of um, the optional items here, like some points bags and things like that. But first you want to go all the way down and start from the bottom. There's a key you can get right away that you're going to need. There's a bunch of bots here. That statue shoots energy orbs at you, so you want to be careful. A lot of those statues will shoot those out from now on in the game. This screen is kind of difficult because you have two mace throwers. You have this one and then another one. But all these platforms make it very difficult to close the distance and get in close so you can deal damage. So, you can actually go over. You can use the jump spell and go over him. And that's probably easier, but I just took my time and went under everything. There's the key that we need, and then can backtrack and head back up the elevator. Kill these bots again. Makes it a lot easier to kill as well with that downward thrust. It's a very useful ability. So there's nothing really here to the right. There's this new enemy, it's the rope. You remember them from the first Legend of Zelda, they kind of look like snakes. They still kind of look like snakes over here, but not as much. But they've come back, and they give a ton of experience as well, 20 each. I think it's a lot. Now here is the bubble. I told you you could farm these for experience points once you got the downward thrust, and you can see how easy it is. You just jump up on top of them and hold down, and that's 50 experience points just like that. You can leave the screen and come back in, and you can keep doing that over and over again if you're lacking experience. 
I'll actually be doing that towards the end of this video just to get some experience points and you'll see that. Here's the style photos, but just fight them like you normally would. Duck and stab is the best way. It's another key and then can go back up the elevator up to the next level. So like I said, you want to start all the way down in this palace and work your way up. And like I said, if you wanted to, you can just leave the screen and come back in and just kill this bubble over and over again for 50 experience points, which are pretty much free. These blue stuffles, they obviously, as you can see, they jump up and try to downward thrust you as well, so be careful with that. This new enemy is called the Dragon Head. It just oscillates in a pattern through the screen, and the best way to fight them is the downward thrust as well. And if you're into math, you'll notice they follow a sine wave across the screen, if that's your kind of thing. Be patient here, don't get hit by the bots when you're trying to jump from platform to platform and you'll fall down in the lava and burn. Die a fire death, you'll notice I almost missed that jump there, I barely made it across. So don't get impatient like I did. There's an iron knuckle, haven't fought one of these in a while. They're a lot easier to kill now with a level 5 sword. Takes what, like two hits? Yeah, two hits. And more free experience points here. And if you remember from the first video, I mentioned that you want to be strategic with your experience points and how you level things up. Because at the end of each palace, when you place the crystal in the statue, the game automatically levels you up to the next level. So you want to make sure you get as much experience as you can from that. So you don't want to be 100 experience from the next level when you put the crystal in, because then you only get 100 experience points. So try to manage well here. So right now I'm headed to get the secret item of this dungeon, it's the Handy Glove. One of the townspeople told us about it. There are blocks that drop down here on the screen, so you want to make your way across very fast before they crush you to death. And, but make sure to get that points back along the way. Here's a red iron knuckle, significantly more difficult than the red ones, but not in my- or than the orange ones, I'm sorry, but not in my case because I actually have the level 5 sword, so it only takes one extra hit to kill. And here's the handy glove, and what it allows you to do is to destroy blocks. So like those blocks that were falling down in the previous screen, you can actually destroy them by hitting your sword. I guess the glove stabilizes Link's wrist and just allows him to hit harder, I guess. This statue here, if you hit it, you can either get magic or an iron knuckle can pop out. So, it's randomly generated, you can get lucky or unlucky. I got lucky. Now I'm going to backtrack and go all the way to the right. Or actually, I'm coming back down. There's the there's a MOA right here. It's a new enemy. They just fly up top and drop down fire at you. Like a bomber. They're kind of annoying, but later on we learn a new sword ability called the Upward Thrust. Which is just like the Downward Thrust, except obviously you shoot your sword upwards, and it makes it easier to fight these MOA creatures. For now, I just kind of ignore them. And you want to time how you jump here so you don't get hit with those energy orbs. And you can see the handy glove in action there. I can hit those blocks. Here again, you can hit the blocks and make your way through. It's 
So there's quite a few bubbles here. Easy experience points again. It's 150 right there. So really you could sit here for about 20 minutes if you wanted to, if you're under level, if you're struggling through the game. And you can just level up and become stronger if you have to. I'm actually going to be farming these for a little bit because like I said I want to make sure I level up my sword to level 6. So that when I defeat the boss of this palace I can level it up straight to level 7. I want to get the most experience as I can. There's one final key I have to get here before I can reach the boss. It's guarded by that mace thrower. I made quick work of him, got the key, and I'm going to go back left. And I'm going to farm that bubble for a while. I'm going to farm it until I have about 2,800 experience points. Because the boss is coming up, but right before the boss there's a few more enemies, a few more experience points you can get. There's going to be a mace thrower, there's going to be a points bag worth 100 points. There's going to be a couple of... Red Iron Knuckles worth 100 points each. It's going to be a Stout Foes worth 50 points. There's going to be an Orange Iron, Iron Knuckle worth 50 points. So you can get a good 400 points before you reach the boss. So for now I'm going to try to get to 2800 and that way I can level up my sword before I reach the boss and I can also skip the health and the magic upgrades. So that way I can get to level 7 sword when I place the crystal in the statue. And I think from level 6 to level 7 sword it's 5,000 experience points so what I'm planning to do is just get a free 5,000 experience which is a ton. And you kind of want to do the same thing. So as you can see it's very easy to do this. Just go right, downward thrust on the bubble, just hold down. Bam, and then go back right, and left, and it respawns. Easy stuff. This one's not cooperating very well, so... These skulls would make for a nice rave. Imagine having a glowing floating skull for your next house party. It'd be pretty cool. And you can tell your guests that if you kill it, you get 50 experience points. For life, I guess. Alright, so I'm probably going to kill one more, and then I'm going to head down towards the boss. Because like I said, there's still room for about 400 more experience points before the boss. Alright, so down this elevator is the correct way. Right away there's a maze store that's going to give you 50 experience points. Just be careful closing the distance so you don't get smacked. Bam, this one actually didn't give me experience because it dropped a jar. There's a points bag right here, you want to be careful with it so you don't fall in the lava. Use the downward thrust to get it, that's the best way I think, but that's 100 points right there. It's definitely worth getting. And there's a red iron knuckle that's going to give you 100 experience points. And there I can level up my sword to level 6. Bam, and then I still have to level up my health. Or at least skip it. Like over here, I'm just going to skip it. And I also have to skip my magic upgrade. And that guy gives you 50 experience, so I can skip the magic, and now you'll see that I need 5,000 experience points to get my sword to level 7, and that's perfect, because now I'm about to fight the boss, so I'm just going to get 4,800 experience points for free, pretty much. This is the boss. The first uh, boss was Horsehead, and this guy is called Helmet Head, because he had a helmet, and he has a head. You knock off his helmet, and then you stab his head, and that's it, really. Very easy boss. And you can place the second of six crystals in the statue. And level up to the next point. I'm getting my level seven sword here. 
thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the Zelda game. And I'll catch you next time for the next video. Thanks again.